What is up everyone, Man Bun Melod here. This is John Petrucci's signature Music Man Majesty six string and we are going to do a deep dive into this sucker. Ever since they announced this guitar, I've wanted to get my hands on it and thanks to Zounds, I've been able to try it out for a couple months. So big shout out to Zounds. There are various models of this guitar in six, seven, and eight string variations. The eight string is multi-scale with a hard tail trim. They come in multiple colors with the top either having the shield inlay or some sort of figured top or natural wood. Other than those small differences, all the other specs are the same from what I can tell. These guitars aren't cheap. This one retails for about $3,800 and some top out close to six grand. If something like this isn't in your price range or you don't wanna spend that kind of money, I would do a review of the Sterling MAJ100 and MAJ200. I'll even show how they compare to this guitar and they have more in common than you'd think, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Now let's get into the details. These are made in California and have a neck through construction. The through neck is Honduran mahogany, which is a good common tone you'll see in higher end guitars. The body has okume wings with a flame maple shield. Flame maple is a very common top wood, although I tend to prefer quilted maple myself. Okume is not a wood I'm familiar with, but it is used a bit in electric guitars because of its fairly balanced yet bright tone and low density, which leads to a lighter guitar. This guitar weighs seven pounds, which is deceivingly light. It weighs just a touch more than my Warmoth VR, which is my go-to live guitar. The ebony fretboard looks awesome. The neck shape is super thin and the fretboard radius is a straight 17 inches, which is pretty flat. The finish on this guitar is tight and blue with a high gloss polyester finish, which looks awesome. I can't find a single bare spot of wood anywhere, not even in the pickup cavities. If there was one thing I could point out is there is a few light spots around the pickup cavities, probably due to the sanding the finish, but they are hardly noticeable. The fingerboard is coated with an oil and wax finish. There are 24 medium jumbo stainless steel frets. If you've never experienced stainless steel frets, you're missing out. The shield inlays are Atlante with a Dream Theater Majesty logo at the first fret. The nut is a standard 1 and 11 16 inch wide and is made of melamine. It is cut with might be relief cuts. I'm not really sure. I should know that I put a heavier set of strings on this guitar because I wanted to tune it to D standard. All the strings fit the nut except the fifth string, which was 44 thousandths. The stock string is 36 thousandths. So if you want to put a larger set of strings on it, you may need to get the nut filed bigger. The tuners in the headstock are in a four plus two configuration with matte black shallower locking tuners. The tuners feel solid, stand tuned, and provide the right amount of resistance when tuning. Moving back to the body, it has a solid matte black floating trim, and there are solid steel saddles with a Fishman Power Ridge Piezo pickup in each saddle. Also, it's not Piezo. It has a chevron cover which has access holes to adjust the intonation for each saddle and the height of each saddle can be individually adjusted. The whammy bar has a little knob at the end which locks it into the bridge, making the likelihood of it falling out near impossible. You may have noticed this guitar does not have a locking trim or locking nut. This can create some tuning issues. When diving with the whammy bar, the tuning is just fine. Issues can occur when doing really big bends. When you come back, the string might be a little flat. Doing a quick dive on the whammy brings the string pretty much back to the original pitch. Each string does have this issue, but it seems to affect the third string the most. Pulling back of the whammy seems to be okay though. I haven't noticed any significant tuning issues when playing, only when playing around and checking the tuning. So it's really not that big of an issue, but I wish they would have put a locking trim and nut on here. The matte black strap buttons are machined with a squared off edge rather than a tapered one, which should be better at keeping your strap from falling off. I'd always recommend replacing any strap buttons with some sort of locking button. I prefer the Dunlop strap locks myself. The strap buttons also have shaped nylon washers instead of felt washers. This was interesting to see. Not sure if it's that big of a deal, but thought I should point it out. The body is fitted with two DiMarzio humbuckers, a dream catcher in the bridge position and a rainmaker in the neck. These are Perchucci's latest signature pickups. The pole pieces are black, giving the pickups a pretty sleek look. There are two three position switches, one below the pickups, which switches between the two magnetic pickups, the other in the horn, which switches between the magnetic and piezo pickups. Both switches are angled in a way that matches the direction of your hand when you go to hit them, which is a nice added detail. There are three pots for mag volume, mag tone, and piezo volume, each having a JP knob with rubber grips. The mag volume and tone pots are also push-push. The volume will activate a boost and the tone will coil split the magnetic pickups. I like the push-push pots over push-pull as you don't have to think about whether to push or pull when you go to hit them. Another nice detail is that each pot feels the same, which isn't very common when you have a combination of normal pots and push-push or push-pull pots. A lot of times they'll feel different, which isn't a big deal, but this being a high-end guitar, it's good that they made sure they felt the same. On the back of the guitar, there are even more controls. There is a button for mono or stereo mode and four mini pots to adjust the amount of mag boost, the mag piezo mix, 
piezo treble tone and piezo bass tone. The battery compartment holds three AA batteries and has an LED on the back. When the LED lights up, you'll have about four to five hours left. If the batteries are dead or you don't have any batteries in the guitar, it will have zero output even with the magnetic pickups. I'm not a big fan of this, but it is what it is. At the end of the neck is a truss rod adjustment wheel. This is pretty common on Music Man guitars and makes adjusting the truss rod really easy. They include a tool that fits perfectly or you can use an Allen wrench. The provided tool could also be used to press the mono stereo switch. Other than that, the guitar comes with a really nice SKB hard shell case, some cleaning wipes, a wiring diagram so you know what all your switches and knobs do, and instructions on how to change the 9 volt battery, even though it uses AA batteries. I would like to see a small screwdriver included as well to adjust the back pots. The overall build quality of this guitar is excellent. The lines all around are perfect. You can't even feel a seam around the shield. All the components fit very nicely. One thing I don't like though is the control knobs aren't centered in the respective recesses. Looking at pictures online, it looks like they're supposed to be positioned that way. Maybe because your pinky rolls on the bottom of the knob, by moving the knob up, you have a little more room. Back when I reviewed the JP70, I did not like these knobs at all. I'm not sure what changed my mind, but they don't bother me as much as they used to. Another thing I would have liked to see is the back plates recessed into the back of the body. Really not a huge deal, but the back of the guitar would look much cleaner. Now let's look at what I call the playability of the guitar. Starting with the body, it is a similar shape to a Jackson Soloist or Ibanez Gem. What's key on this guitar is the bottom cutout goes to the 24th fret and only curves up to between the 23rd and 24th frets. The top cutout goes to between the 20th and 21st frets. Additionally, there is a pretty significant contour at the body neck joint. With all these features, this guitar has great upper fret access. You don't need to put your hand in a weird position to hit those high frets, even on the sixth string. With the belly contour on the back and the forearm contour on the front, it makes for a very comfortable guitar to hold sitting down or standing up. And with the top horn reaching all the way to the 12th fret, the neck won't dive forward when you let go of the guitar. Looking at the neck, the thin profile is definitely thin. The neck is 735 thousandths at the first fret and 805 at the 12th fret. For comparison, a Jackson Soloist is 790 at the third fret and 850 at the 12th fret. Do a little math, it should be about 772 at the first. This makes the Majesty a bit thinner, but not as thin as a Japanese made Ibanez Gem, which is 709 at the first and 787 at the 12th. The fretboard has a constant 17 inch radius, which makes it pretty flat. A Japanese Ibanez Gem has the same radius, whereas a Jackson Solus will have a 12 to 16 inch compound radius. A compound radius is pretty common. Having a smaller radius towards the nut usually makes it easier to finger chords and a flatter radius near the higher frets make it easier to sew on. Having a pretty flat fretboard is new to me, but I honestly haven't noticed a difference in feel. I might actually look into flatter necks. You may be wondering why I'm comparing the neck to a gem and solace. It's because these are the necks I'm most familiar with and they tend to play very fast. And this neck is definitely no exception. The one thing that might be a small turnoff with the neck is the gloss finish. They can tend to be a little sticky. However, playing on this for a couple months now, it doesn't feel so bad. Would I prefer a natural neck? Sure, but I wouldn't shy away from this guitar because of it. If Johnny Boy can shred on it, that certainly means I should be able to, assuming I had the skills. The setup from the factory was pretty good. However, I noticed the neck began to bow more than I was comfortable with. I tightened the neck a bit, which was a breeze with the truss rod wheel and am now happy with it. The adjustment only took me about a minute. The intonation on this guitar is spot on and the string height is damn near perfect. As you've seen, this guitar has a lot of controls, so let's see what they do and how the guitar sounds. For the demos, I'll be using the Archetype Pertucci Amp Sim by Neural DSP. The lower three-way switch simply controls the magnetic pickups and behaves like a normal three-way switch. Back towards the bridge is the bridge pickup, forward towards the neck is the neck pickup, and the middle is both pickups. Let's try the bridge. <laughs> The bridge pickup gives you a good crunch and is very articulate, but what if we go up high? It does sound a bit shrill when you get up to those high notes. You can counteract that by rolling off the tone. You 
can also counteract that by using the neck pickup. The neck pickup is articulate as well, but takes some of that edge off compared to the bridge. Compared to neck pickups I usually play, this one accentuates the highs a little more. You can always cut them down with some EQ if you're not into it. Mixing both of them together gives you the best and worst of both pickups. <laughs> Honestly, I've never been a big fan of mixing the bridge and neck pickups together. In fact, most of my guitars don't even have a middle position at all. One thing you can do with the mag pickups is use the tone push push switch to coil split both pickups when the three-way switch is in the middle. This way you get one coil from each pickup. <laughs> You definitely get a big output when using that coil split. When the three-way switch is in the other two positions, the tone push-push switch does nothing. I think this is a little unfortunate. I really like having a coil split in the neck position for clean tones. However, this dual coil split might work okay for clean tones. Actually, let's see how all these pickups sound clean, starting with probably the worst for clean, the bridge pickup. <laughs> There's no getting around it, that doesn't sound good. It almost sounds distorted. But let's move on to something good, the neck pickup. Now that sounds much better, but it is a bit boomy. If they let you coil split the neck pickup alone, that would really solve the boominess. Let's see how the two sound together. I'm not really a big fan of that pairing, but it does sound better than the bridge pickup alone. Now let's coil split them.
don't sound bad. The wooiness is gone because of the coil split, but there is some added twang from the bridge pickup, which you can lessen with the tone, but can't quite get rid of completely. Of course, we can't talk about clean without talking about the piezo pickups. Those are easily accessed with the horn switch. In the lower position, you'll have just the mags. In the upper position, the piezos, and in the middle position, both. I'll be switching to my piezo amp sim for these tests. I love the way piezo pickups sound on an electric guitar. It's the closest you can get to sounding like an acoustic without being an acoustic. Very pucky, but it doesn't quite have the body of an acoustic. Let's see what happens when we mix in the mags, starting with the neck pickup. I think the neck pickup overwhelms the piezo. Not the greatest combo. How about both mags? That's not too bad. Adds in a little more depth. What if we call a split? Now that's the combo. Both Meg's coil split add the depth without overwhelming the piezo. Moving on to the rest of the controls, there are two volume pots that control the Meg's and piezo separately. On the back of the guitar, you have the Meg piezo blend pot to set the mix between the two. I've had the mix at 50-50 for these demos. I'm personally not a big fan of this volume control setup. I prefer to have one master volume knob that controls both Meg's and piezos and have the blend knob on the front in place of the second volume knob. This is how I have my Warmoth Regal set up. Obviously, this works for Mr. Pachucci. Pushing the mag volume knob will give you a volume boost to the mag pickups, but does nothing to the piezos. The amount of boost can be controlled with the mag boost pot on the back of the guitar and has a maximum boost of 20 decibels. Now, I might receive some crap for this, but I really don't understand the purpose of an output boost for an electric guitar. The main reason I don't want a volume boost is when I solo, but the guitar is going into the gain stage of my amplifier, which might push the amp a little bit more, but gives zero additional volume output from the amplifier. You could have your gain set a little low on your amp and use the boost to help increase the gain, but I really don't know what this would be useful for. If you find a boost on your guitar useful, please let me know. Finally, the last control, the mono stereo switch. In mono mode, you have only one signal, like a normal guitar. This is how I've been playing the guitar so far. In stereo mode, you can output the mag and piezo pickup separately. To do this, you'll need a TRS cable and a way to split the signal to connect to separate TS outputs. Here I'm using a simple hose splitter. I'm sure there are more elegant solutions. This is nice if you want your piezo signal to go to a completely different signal chain, like an acoustic preamp, which will go directly into the mixing board, but it does add some complexity to the setup. I've set this up in stereo mode, going to two different inputs on my audio interface, which go to two different amp sim setups. The mags are going to my clean amp sim, the piezos are going to my piezo amp sim, 
Now if I go to the middle position, it'll output both. Stereo mode can also be useful when switching between distorted and clean sounds if you're only using the piezos for your clean sound. This way you only have to flip the switch on the guitar and not hit an additional button or more on your pedal board. Thanks again to Zounds for letting me try this out. And if you want to pick one up, check out my affiliate links in the description. But hey, until next time, rock on.